Yeah. Okay, sorry. Let's go back. I'm not very tech savvy. Also, someone sent me a disturbing video before this and kind of threw me a bit. So apologies for... Um, okay, so basically what we are doing in the short term at Bitprop is to help micro property owners be included into the global financial system in a beneficial way. And the long term is to create wealth and sustainable pensions for those outside of the global pension system. Um, and a lot of you are probably thinking like right now, like, but how did you get from backyard rental to talking about pension? Um, and really what it came from was this idea that um, in South Africa, particularly, um, you know, the 4 million people have been given a free asset by the government. And in a lot of ways, it's difficult to maintain this. Um, and while it is an asset and a, a property asset that grows in value with the property markets every year, it is a dead asset to most homeowners as there's no way of leveraging that finance. So BitProp really is trying to find a way to leverage the inherent value in that. And through creating backyard rental properties, what we're doing is we're allowing the homeowner to um, generate a sustainable long-term income, which becomes a pension over time. Ugh, no, what's happening? So who are we? Um, BitProp, or what are we, I guess? BitProp enables large-scale investment into small-scale property development in a way that creates wealth for the landowner and returns on capital whilst significantly uplifting of lifting living conditions for those who need it the most. Our vision is to create an entirely new asset class by supplying the platform to enable and support micro property development at a macro scale. So this is just who we are. Um, we're quite a small team. We do quite a lot. And this is just kind of how we work. So we have funders who invest into an investment vehicle. And that investment vehicle develops the um, backyard rental accommodation. It takes us roughly six to eight weeks to complete the builds of four to eight rental units. And we do all the construction management. Um, we, when we select property owners, we try and focus on um, selecting um, women or female partners. Um, the units are all designed by architects. It says here professionally, but <laughs> I mean, we are professional, but um, it's very hard to kind of like work with a, a 20 square meter unit. Um, we have professional project management of the build to ensure that our timelines are kept um, quite tight and that we always finish sort of before a month in so that we don't have um, unnecessary empty weeks of flats. And then we have support, we select sort of um, local contractors to build with us and we try and offer them support and additional training so that through the, the, um, the building of the units, they are also um, upskilled in a way. And at the moment we are working with our current contractor to understand or to try and support him so that he can have a second team going so he can run up to four or six sites at a time. So we're focusing on supporting him through that. And then we obviously have a very strict legal and environmentally, um, environmentally sort of, like the, the units are legally and environmentally compliant, um, which just means that we get plans approval for them and we focus on, um, we're trying to look at moving towards PV and alternative um, energy solutions. And then we have a system with our homeowners. So once the units are up and running and rented, the tenants pay bid prop directly and we pay out the homeowner and that payout is based on contractually um, set out milestones. Um, oh, and those contractually milestones are actually related to the build. Sorry, my bad. And then um, at the end of the six or eight weeks of construction, we hand over the 
rental units, which then we also maintain over a period of 10 years. So what we do is we also realize that a lot of the, the homeowners that we partner with are not in the business of rental management or property management. So we partner with homeowners and we don't just sort of build and walk away. We, we build and we have a homeowner education program, which we take the, the property owner through. Um, we teach them about uh, conflict mediation. If there's an issue with the tenants, we teach them about doing maintenance checks, which are needed to be done once a month. Um, and financial management. We've also started to talk to some of our longer term homeowners about how they can possibly put some of the rental aside to purchasing a second property. Um, but what we're really trying to focus on at the moment is by investing into, so taking a property, investing into that property and increasing its value. And then, sorry, there's construction next door. So then the, we start to generate an income through the rental and we manage that rental and prove that there's a rental income from those units. And then we can take that property and that homeowner to a um, formal financial institution and sell it on as a traditional home loan to that financial institution. Um, and what this does is it, it just means that BitProp take that initial risk and we could take someone who potentially is blacklisted, who doesn't have a formal income, so or maybe, maybe they have... Um, piecework but they have the property and they have you know like a bad credit score but not a, like a, a, a black like a, a scrapped what's it called when you don't have a when they like anyway and we can take that person we can take the risk and develop for them and through proving the the income and helping them sort of get their their credit score right they are then they then become visible to the banks which is what we're talking about when we talk about financial inclusion. So BitProp does quite a lot in this, um, in this whole chain. Um, we have the, proper, the micro property development vehicle, which funders invest into, um, and then we manage that investment. And then we f invest um, into the property directly, but we are also, um, we, like I said, we work on construction management with the community-based builder. We work on property management with the home, homeowner. And then we do rental management with the tenants when the tenants eventually come on board. So at the moment, what we are doing is we're building a, a, a tech platform where we're pulling in pieces of tech that focus on these three areas of management being construction, property, and rental. So this is um, this was the third build we did last year. It's an example of one of the biggest units we do. So um, that uh, house with the 59 in the front, the single story house was the original. This was quite a big plot. And so we were able to do eight rental units. Um, so there's four downstairs and four upstairs and they laid out in like an L shape. Um, this was the first one we did an interior shot. Um, and so to date we've built on six different properties and each property comes with its own set of challenges and constraints, um, which as much as we try and standardize our plan and keep to, um, a very strict kind of, um, 20 square meters and a two square meter bathroom, Sometimes we have to adjust and every time, um, last year was our first year, so every time we did a new build, we iterated a bit um, and we tried to look at how we might um, improve the design. So the first ones that we did were very sort of long and rectangular. Ugh, there's not more pictures. But this is slide is in the wrong place but yeah this is just taking you through how we go from the journey that i was talking about to financial inclusion so going 
from finding the homeowner, doing the education around it, getting the plans approvals, completing the units, managing the cash flow, applying and managing the home loan process, and then settling with BitProp is how we get um, a homeowner from being un or underbanked through to being financially included. Um, this is just a little history of our um, of what how development uh, BitProp developed. So in 2015 and 2018, one of our co-funders was, I can never say this, philanthropically giving money away to transfer title deeds. And um, we saw that there was, you know, um, a gap in the market to be able to, to be able to, to do this in a sustainable and profit driven way. Um, and that's how BitProp was established. And last year we launched um, and we got to site quite quickly to do a proof of concept. We built on four properties and now we have 34 rental units across six different properties. So we have six homeowners who we work with. We've raised about $500,000 in capital and we've been using that um, obviously because this is a very capital intensive business. Um, and we've really focused on income creation, not only for the homeowners, but also for the, um, the builders. Uh, and with each new build, we've tried to focus on using locally sourced products. So now we partner with a, a small business in Kailicha, who's like two kilometers away from our site, who builds the aluminum windows for us. And we have another guy who does the, um, I'm just going to skip this. Um, and over the two years, we've really exceeded expectations. Um, we've learned a lot of lessons um, and we've gained a lot of experiences. Our business model has pivoted quite a lot. We've really kind of had to stay on our toes and focus on, on being quite agile. And our next focus as we go th through into 2021, hopefully no pandemics, um, slow us, but is really to focus on scaling and scaling for us means having to um, getting our back end systems working um, focusing on a standard plan and, and possibly sort of some prefabricated parts of the building that are easier to erect and have less waterproofing issues um, yeah, so in terms of like global impact, um, we kind of tick a lot of the SDG boxes. Um, the biggest is obviously SDG 11 around sustainable cities and communities. Um, and then these are just four of our six homeowners and the financial impact that we have um, had. And you can see there's an there's an average of a 550,000 Rand increase in property value from what the original property value to post um, but prop construction. And in a lot of um, the cases, in three of the four cases, um, the women weren't earning um, any, any income before. And after the, um, after, or any rental income from their property at least. Um, and after the big prop um, builds, you can see that, you know, in the case of Norma Wiesa, who's the third woman there, um, hers was the house that we showed you that had the, the eight units. She's put in future when she has the full rental, she'll be earning 20,000 Rand a month. So, yeah, it's been um, a journey. This is the unit where normally we still be um, earning 20,000 Rand a month. And this is where we hosted our Christmas party last year, which is why we have Hunter's umbrellas there. Um, yeah, so basically that's, that's us and that's what we do. And um, I think let's, 
if everyone is okay to um, maybe pop on their videos, we can just have a more of an informal chat. You can ask some questions. Um, yeah, so uh, is your name Mient? Do you say Mient? Is it pronounced Mient? Um, Mint asks, does BitProp take a portion of the rental income? So what happens is um, for the first five years, uh, all the rental income comes directly from the tenants to BitProp's account. And we then take off a certain percentage for maintenance costs, which we keep aside. Um, we have a bad debt coverage, which is for in case no one, if someone doesn't pay their rent in one of the months, um, we take off an insurance amount and also a small administration fee. And um, once all of those costs have been deducted, the final amount is split between um, BitProp and between the homeowner. So from month one, the homeowner begins making a, a an income from their property and over time that income increases um, and we have that sharing agreement with the homeowner for a period of 10 years and after 10 years the homeowner makes the full amount um, which is when like in Norma Weiss's case she would be earning the full 20,000 rand a month. Any other questions? So quiet. Hey Claire, thank you for the powerful presentation. I think what you guys are doing is really good. Um, so I just have a question for the homeowners that you have trained or gave an education to, have any of them gone on to like partner, partner with you on future projects or create their own property development um, schemes or things? Yeah, that's just my question. Cool. So we only started last year. Um, we, uh, we, yeah, so the longest kind of contract we have with any of our homeowners or partnership we have with our homeowners is a year and a half. But one of the big kind of um, things that we say in our, um, or that we try and teach in our homeowner training process is this idea of in the first five years, put extra money away to, well, put your rental income away to improve your property in some ways. So, um, and we really, we kind of list the ways that you can improve your property, whether it be through security or adding security, um, adding like social spaces for your um, tenants. And in one of the cases, uh, one of our property owners has already paved her driveway and her like outside area. And she added a bunch of extra washing lines for her tenants. So all of the tenants have their own like drying spaces. And another one of our property owners who's only had her property generating income for two months, she has bought um, a whole bunch of bricks so that she can um, build a bry place for like as a social space for her tenants. Um, another one of our property owners uh, extended the wall, the front wall. So they're all sort of focusing on these these small incremental um, changes first, and then I, hopefully they'll go on to partner with us on getting second properties. Um, okay, and then I see another question from Mint about individuals being able to invest in BitProp. Unfortunately, at the moment, because we're not a um, financial um, what's it? services provider, uh, only um, professional investors can invest um, into our company, which means that you understand like the risks of investing and all that kind of stuff. And that means that there's a very high minimum investment amount. Um, I don't know it offhand, but I can always find it and email it to you. We are working at the moment with a couple of um, uh, organizations like Easy Equities um, to try and see if there's a way that we could do like a almost like a crowdfunding platform but like Easy Equities has property and Easy Properties now where you can invest into a property yourself. So if we can 
work out the, the details of working with a vehicle like that in time, we definitely want to allow for individuals to be able to invest. Um, but at the moment, unfortunately not. But watch the space. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? Okay, so just a bit of a scary backstory at the moment. One of the, well, not backstory, side story. Um, one of the biggest challenges we are facing is um, this idea of gangsters in Kailicha extorting um, homeowners. So because this is a very visible um, addition to one's property, um, gang gangs are going around to homeowners and saying like you need to pay us a protection or protection service fee um, and what's really crazy is that during COVID when bigger property management companies were um, sort of reporting 50% non-payments um, of tenants and um, like massive defaults in, in residential tenants not paying their rental. Um, we only had about a 10% default on our rental. So um, our, our tenants were able to survive and continue to pay their rent throughout COVID. Um, and now the biggest threat to us is, is gangsters and not global pandemics. So if anyone has a uh, innovative way of how to protect from gangsterism, drop me a DM. Dylan and Sebastian, do you wanna come and weigh in on anything? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna invite Dylan and Sebastian over. They, are you gonna bring your chairs? Or just gonna stand? This is Sebastian, he's Hi also an architect. And this is Dylan. Hey guys. He's like the head of marketing and everything. He's a jack of all trades. Um, so Dylan, do you maybe want to just like chat about, about what's been the hardest thing from like a tenant management point of view? Yeah, I think as we've, I think from the beginning up until now, we've kind of gone through phases as we've learned. Um, the more complicated thing has been the sort of relationship between us and the homeowner and the tenants. So when we started, we thought, okay, the homeowner should be the person that recruits the tenants um, in whatever way works best. And what we found was there was, particularly with the first people we worked with, a big sense of disempowerment that, you know, the first or second or third request uh, in the end didn't result in a tenant. And then, you know, we had people feeling like, oh, okay, I can't do this. Um, and so we had to s step in and do the recruit recruitment ourselves. And now we've, we've carried on doing that because it's, it worked out pretty well. Um, and then we, we kind of took that over. And then later on in the process, we brought it back into the middle where we share that responsibility with the homeowner. So um, from a tenant point of view, it, it's fairly flawless. It, it's the tenant market is very dynamic. We don't have any long term sticky problems with tenants. It's more about the interaction with the homeowner in relation to the tenants. Um, you know, it's small things like, can we break up the deposit over three months because of the pandemic? Um, people had a lot, had significantly reduced spending power. Um, so it was just kind of working with our homeowners to negotiate that sort of thing. And us as a business, finding that balance where we've got homeowners that we have a great relationship with, um, you know, we're working on a lot of things and there's almost, we don't want there to be too much dependency. We're trying to create a business, their own business for them to run that we've just started and support. And so what's quite challenging is the human aspect of how do we get that off our, it's not our responsibility. The homeowner can 
have that negotiation themselves with the tenants to break up the deposit or, you know, menial stuff about electricity or that sort of thing. So that's been quite an interesting challenge over the last few months, you know, how we go back with homeowners we're already working with and how we try and build that into the education process from the beginning with new homeowners. Um, yeah, just on that, someone asks, how do you identify homeowners collaborating? How do we identify homeowners? It's been very, very organic up until now, very much 95% word of mouth. Yeah. So we started with one person through a contact who used to work with Claire and from that it just exploded like wildfire. Um, you know, we'd barely finished the first build and we were getting calls from all around the country from people yeah. asking us to build for them. Um, so it's mostly still through that, through word of mouth. And then obviously there's a funnel, we, you know, we meet people and we see is their property right or uh, is the person right for us to partner with. And, you know, that's a whole process on its own. But up until now, it's just been word of mouth. Um, we will have to build a proper system to expand our pipeline in the future, but it hasn't been necessary yet. Yeah. And then Mians, on your other question around the insurance. So the insurance that we pay for at the moment just covers sort of physical damage by like fire or flooding or I guess acts of God. Um, or, um, but we keep a portion aside every month so we almost act as our own insurer um, that we set aside specifically for rental defaults. Um, and that just makes sure that like, uh, if the room is empty or if someone doesn't pay, that we can sort of service the loan um, in those months. So we're not, we're not asking an insurer to do that. Um, the insurer is mostly just covering damage to the physical um, unit. Um, Seb, do you want to talk about like a little bit about the the architecture of these spaces and how they compare to other units going up in and around Cape Town? Mm. Well, um, well, firstly, at Bitprop, we try to build with the, the most minimal budget possible, but still try to provide high quality units. And we have realized uh, using the most affordable products that we do have to kind of keep improving the quality while keeping costs down. A big thing for us is making sure that our, our spaces are, they are very efficient concerning size, yet the design really suits the needs of the user. So we've been watching with each build, how users occupy and use the rooms that they've been given, how use, what, if, how will the tenant, uh, do they want a bath, do they want a shower? Um, where do they usually keep their stove and how much stuff they actually bring with them to, to these rental units. And just try, try to develop kind of like a, a real understanding of who's renting these units. We've seen lots of single people renting the units, a few small families, and trying to develop something that can really suit all of these people's needs. Um, another big thing is trying to keep the, the additional service tariffs low. So making sure that we can maybe share a geezer um, everyone has a sub-metering uh, electrical meter, which makes sure that they have to only pay for their electricity, things like that. Um, but yeah, at the moment, we've really been commended on the, the design of our units and the layout. Um, and just adding a little bit, because most of the market is flooded with backyard, uh, basically backyard micro developers who, who understand how to put a building up. But uh, yeah, we, we really want to push it concerning the detail and the, the kind of detailing we are able to do with our architectural background that's not available in this market. Um, so taking the products that exist and seeing how we can reuse them and, and kind of improve upon them with, with every bowl. Yeah. Yeah, I just have a question. Apart from the gangst gangsterism in Kailija, uh, what has been like the feedback from the community? And yeah, how have they responded to some of the projects you've had? Um, should, should I? Yeah, you can take it. Um, well, I think we've had great feedback so far. Um, it shows with our homeowner pipeline, whereby most of our referencing comes from neighbors or 
people down the street. Most of our builds are taking place in Alita Park in Kalicha, um, which is experiencing rapid growth, uh, tons of rental units. And uh, yeah, people really appreciate the buildings. Um, for example, the, the most recent building we built, uh, we, had, we built eight units on the property and we, we had kind of like a certain way of painting it and so forth. And uh, three weeks later, there were 16 units on the property next door, not built by us, but by the, the homeowner next door. And they almost played with our color scheme and it, it, like really you, you see a lot of development in the area. So um, yeah, we've received a lot of, I, I would say the community definitely accepts us. Uh, it's also nice to have a network of homeowners speaking between one another who are all part of the BitProp process, helping one another, one another out. And um, Yes, we always also use our homeowners as a final reference for people applying for BitProp flats. So if someone down the road is applying, we like to go to our homeowners, ask about their standing within the community and, and just verify that it's a, it's a good choice. Thank you. Yes. Does anyone else have any questions, any comments, any concerns? Thanks, <laughs> Cool. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for joining today. Um, I think, I mean, I can pop my email address, um, but otherwise you can just pop onto our website if you have any questions or concerns or anything in the future, and then you can just pop an email to info at BitProp, and it'll go through to Dylan, and then he'll forward <laughs> it to me, and I'll probably ignore it for a while, but we'll get back to you eventually. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining us today. And yeah, have a good week. Thank you very much, guys. Cool. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the questions. Cool. Bye.